This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Audible.com. Console Wars and Blogger Wars. PlayStation Pass, Sonos Play, Droid 3, Zoom 2, John in New York, Noah in San Francisco, and yes, it's your weekly Apple rumor update. But we'll keep this one small, I promise. It's tech. Don't ever do this on camera. It's Techno Buffalo's rumor roundup. What is happening everybody? I'm Noah Kravitz from Techno Buffalo and this is the roundup for today, Friday, July 8th, 2011. This week's roundup is brought to you by Audible.com. And I'll tell you what, it's also brought to you by the mad editing skills of our own John Quatch. Last week, I'll tell you, I feel a little lonely this week doing the show by myself. Last week I had the uh, opportunity to be in person with John Rettinger, so we filmed the roundup together. So we could say that we don't know what the status is of the trash truck? Oh, look at that. See, that's why, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, folks. Our man John Q, he's our uh, post-production editing production mastermind. He made John look prettier, and he made my head look even shinier. So, you know, he, uh, he's got the skills to pay the bills, people used to say way back in, like, 1992. Anyway, John Q also put together a little blooper reel from last week's shenanigans. But you're packing 4G in your pocket, aren't you? I'm listening. I'm I'm joke. I'm, I'm back in 12G. So if you haven't seen that, go over to technobuffalo.com and check it out. Speaking of going over to technobuffalo.com, the new episode of Console Wars is up now. If you haven't seen it, our man LP taking you through this season of Console Wars. It's PlayStation versus Xbox, but in particular, it's Move versus Connect. The past, present, I guess not past, but the present and future of motion-based gaming, Move versus Connect. In this week's episode, uh, LP takes a look back at E3 2011 and uh, what the show, what the announcements mean and will mean to both platforms, the PlayStation 3-based Move, the Xbox 360-based Connect. At the end of the episode, LP awards a point. I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to have to go watch it. So check it out, Console Wars on technobuffalo.com. Speaking of wars, what is going on in the tech blogosphere? I'm not one to generally report, let alone condone, to report on blogger on blogger violence, if you will. But uh, a former AOL, can I call him a superstar? I've never met him, but I've heard he's a good guy. i got some friends who know him. I think he's a superstar. A former AOL superstar in gadget editor-in-chief, ex-editor-in-chief, Josh Chapolsky, left Engadget a while back, uh, one of the world's biggest tech blogs, of course, not as cool as Techno Buffalo, but you know, they, they do a good job, uh, left a while back to go start a new site with the folks at SB Nation. The new site, which will be SB Nation's first foray into tech reporting, is slated to go live this fall. In the meantime, Josh and his crew are working on something called This Is My Next. It's a tech blog, thisismynext.com, and uh, Josh brought some of his Engadget friends with him initially. They've been picking up a few more as they go, and in the past week or so, they've just raided the pantry, bringing a bunch more X and Gadget folks, and also somebody from uh, Switched, another AOL property or former AOL property, over to This Is My Next and presumably to stick around for when the new site begins. All Things D reported this week that the This Is My Next squad is now up to 16 writers, uh, almost all of them former AOL employees. There's one person who comes to mind, not an AOL person, but everybody else. I'm sure there's more than one, but off the top of my head, I can't think anymore. Uh, in the meantime, so they've got 16. In the meantime, in Gadget, lost a bunch of people, hired a bunch of new people. They're uh, running with about 24 writers right now, although by the time you read this, you know, the way tech things go, that those numbers could change. Uh, but what is going on? Is it a personal thing? There's kind of this weird thing that happened with uh, back before Josh left with Josh and uh, the editor-in-chief of another blog. I'm going I'm to let that one remain name, nameless for my own personal reasons, but uh, who just kind of went off on some, uh, some forums and in a blog post and stuff, slinging mud at Josh, even though they were both under the AOL umbrella. I don't know what's going on there. You know, I've got friends uh, at This Is My Next. I've got friends at Engadget. Okay, they're not really friends, but I like to call them friends because it makes me feel good. So I'm not taking sides. They're both cool sites, but I tell you what, if you like tech, you like the internet, and you like soap opera drama, keep an eye on this one. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Engadget. And uh, this is my next when it becomes whatever it's becoming later on this year with SB Nation. Speaking of wars, speaking of console wars, speaking of consoles, see how I did that? I just backed up to go forward. 
Uh, our own Joey Davidson reported earlier this week on something called PSN Pass that may or may not actually uh, be coming to a PlayStation 3 near you in the near future. But uh, there's something going around in the gaming community. PS somebody discovered something called PSN Pass, which uh, no details on it. But it does make folks think of uh, EA Pass, which is basically a system to ensure that uh, if you buy a used copy of a game, the publisher has a chance to make a little extra money off of you by locking you out of certain features like online play, stuff like that, uh, until you buy a pass. So basically the deal, I guess the way it works with EA, you know, I'm not the gaming expert, that's why you gotta go read Joey's story. I'm not just trying to get you to go to the site. It's true, he knows more about it than I do. Uh, basically you have to pay 10 bucks to unlock those features that when you buy the game new in shrink wrap off the shelf, you get a code and you can enter that code to access, you know, online features and, and additional gameplay features. Uh, but then, you know, in the gaming community, a lot of times you play a game, you're done with it, you sell it, you trade it, whatever, you buy used games. And so EA has done something where if you buy the used game, you have to pay 10 bucks extra to unlock those additional features. It looks like Sony may be gearing up to do something similar with their PlayStation games. Uh, nothing official on this, just a rumor, but something called PSN Pass, worth keeping an eye on if you're a PlayStation gamer. The cost and size requirements for entering the world of high-end wireless audio maybe dropping maybe it's a rumor sonos makers of and i have one sonos was kind enough to send me a couple of their s5 boxes to check out with their new android app and and just straight up in all honesty they're very impressive uh sonos their wireless music system uh, they, they, it runs on their own network this mesh network which basically may, means uh, it's more reliable than wi-fi it works really well you can play different music in different parts of your home on different you know if you have more than one system then you can also sync them all up to play the same music at the same time you're throwing a party or whatever uh you know like me and all my made up blogger friends when we have a party exactly anyway but the cost to entry for Sonos is kind of high, especially as compared to uh, systems you can throw together, you know, using Apple hardware or uh, a lot of the Android-based phones, you can use their systems now, that kind of thing. Well, apparently, there are rumors kicking around that Sonos is working on something called the S3 or maybe the S3 Play, which would be a little teeny tiny wireless speaker system with a built-in amp, perhaps, you know, kind of a bedside table size. Now, apparently, it's not, there's no alarm clock on the uh, spy shots that have surfaced on the internet. But, you know, kind of alarm clock sized, which hopefully would bring down not only the size of the unit, all the S5 I have is not that big, kind of the size of a big iPod dock, but also hopefully the price. Because uh, right now the S5, 400 bucks, great audio quality, but 400 bucks kind of a lot for, you know, one zone of a system when you have to piece together a system. So maybe the S3 uh, will bring down not only the size, but the price of getting into the world of Sonos. And, uh, you know, I don't know, it's just a rumor. But I'm keeping an eye on it, an ear on it, if you will, because uh, I've had great luck with the Sonos system, but I was lucky enough just to have them send me one. It definitely is pricey. So stay tuned for more on that from Sonos if the S3 Play does come to life. Speaking of, right, how can I do this? Oh, speaking of the number three, we're talking about the Sonos S3. Motorola released the Droid 3 earlier this week, and now there are rumors, I'm gonna keep doing this because the numbers keep going back and forth. Now there are rumors that uh, something that might be called the Zoom 2 has cleared the FCC. If you remember, Motorola Zoom was the first Android 3.0 Honeycomb tablet to hit the US. A uh, big advertising campaign that started back at the Super Bowl earlier this year, came out on Verizon. And uh, when it first came out, it was like, boom, the first big you know, uh, tablet with Android made for tablets and the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, the market flooded with Android Honeycomb tablets. And frankly, the Zoom now looks a little big, a little heavy, the screen's a little washed out, the price was a little high. Well, Motorola already started doing something about it by cutting prices this week. Zoom, the Wi-Fi version of Zoom, now available at most outlets for $500, some places selling it cheaper with coupon codes and sales and whatnot. But apparently, a Zoom 2 may be in the works with a slightly refined form factor, a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, I guess. And also, this is the big one, the inclusion of an LTE radio, 4G radio, in addition to CDMA. Now, that would mark the Zoom 2, if that's what it's indeed going to be called, for a launch on Verizon. And if you recall, when the first Zoom came out, the idea was that it would be LTE upgradable, and then eventually they would start shipping an LTE 
version right out of the box. So might we be seeing that with a slightly reformed form factor, slightly refined form factor? You have to reform the form factor. You have to reform what you do with it. Uh, we've already seen Samsung launch the Galaxy Tab internationally, the 10.1, and then decide they needed to make a thinner, sleeker, lighter version to actually ship to compete with iPad 2. So Motorola might be doing you know, a similar thing. Uh, the tablet war is definitely heating up. Did I mention console wars? Yeah, I did. You don't need me to say that again. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. They've got over 75,000 titles to choose from that can be downloaded to your iPod or MP3 player and played back anywhere, anytime. They've got all kinds of books across the genres, so whether you're into science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, or whatever else, Audible.com has something for you. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash techno, John Keyes, put that up on your screen there so you can uh, write it down yourself. Put it in your browser. Head on over there and you can get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. So go over to audio, audiblepodcast.com slash techno, T-E-C-H-N-O. And you know, if you happen to run into somebody, tell them Noah sent you. Tell them you're part of the herd. Audiblepodcast.com slash techno for your free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Speaking of mobile, speaking of new stuff, next week's going to be crazy. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it may be this week. The week starting Monday, July 11th, our own John Renger is going to be barnstorming across the, the East Coast. Did I say barnstorming? He's going to be blazing. It's going to be hot, yo. He's going to be blazing. John's going to be in New York City and the surrounding areas, hitting up a bunch of mobile-related events. So if you're into smartphones, if you're into mobile stuff, if you're into new products, if you're into technology, just keep an eye out is all I'm saying. We'll have, uh, I'm sure, there'll be some interesting new news and perhaps product announcements coming out of the New York City area. Uh, next week, the week of Monday, July 11th. So keep it on Techno Buffalo. John's going to, you know, whatever it is, if he can get his hands on it, he will. And I'm going to be doing the same out here in San Francisco. I will be at the Mobile Beat Conference. We are a media sponsor of that. And uh, Little Birdie told me there may be a product launch on the West Coast out here as well. I uh, can't tell you what it is, but it might also have to do with mobile. So stay tuned for that. Uh, looks to be an interesting week shaping up next week, the week of the 11th, in Techno Buffalo land for sure. Finally, last but not least, Apple Rumor Update. You know the drill at this point. New iPhone, new iPad. In September, the latest is that the new iPad might be called iPad 2 Plus, and that the iPhone 5 might be headed to Sprint. That's all I got for you. Till next time, thanks again to our friends and sponsors at audible.com. As always, thanks to the uh, indefatigable, there's a word for you, John Quatch. Happy Canada Day, belated John. Uh, for all of his post-production efforts. And, you know, John Rettinger, if you're watching this, we got to get the band back together. Let's do, a, do another one of these in person because uh, you don't make me any funnier, but, uh, you know, the light reflecting off my head makes, uh, you know, it, it lights your eyes up. So we should do it for sure. Till next time, I'm Noah Kravitz. Much more information on all these stories and lots more on technobuffalo.com, our Twitter feed, our Facebook page, all that good, good stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll start a Google Hangout and we can all get together and talk tech. We'll see you later.